journal podcast where I reveal what the Lord is saying through dreams, visions, and testimonials. Today's topic, finding grace. So this is um, a dream, a dream slash vision that I was given. Um, I wrote this down December, around December 31st, on December 31st, but this happened around that time, and um, this is, I'm in a whole new season, actually coming to the end of it, so this is the one before, the season before this one that I'm wrapping up, and so, um, yeah, I've been really, really busy, extremely busy, um, with the season that I'm in now and it's coming to a close so I have a little bit of time to upload but at the time um, I just absolutely had no time to do anything you know when you're starting a season you're hitting the ground running and there is just it this time it was a bit chaotic and it was a lot going on um so let me um get into the dream and I'll just um kind of break down um uh, everything that um, that I want to share about it and what the Lord is asking me to divulge. So, uh, I said last night at a dream I was in a town. Um, I was just uh, in, in this random town um, and just going out and about. I was... I remember I was just shopping or window shopping, looking and just running errands on foot. Um, I think there was like a light rail. I got on there, got on. I mean, I was just doing in this vicinity of this town. I was just doing everyday um, tasks and errands. And so... Um, I was ready to go home, and so I I noticed that, let's see, that there was uh, someone following me every step of the way. There was someone following me, um, and they were just, like, super on point with the following. Like, I couldn't see who they were. Their windows were tinted, <clears throat> and... I got to a point where I was about to leave indefinitely. I was about to get on this. I don't remember if I was in a car or not. I think I was about to get on the train out of just the the train home. And this person stopped. Stopped me somehow. But I couldn't see them. And they were yelling. They got out of their vehicle. It was like now or never for them. That's what I remember. It was like now or never. They were, they're kind of hood. They're they're really hood, actually. You know, um, yelling. Threatening my life. Yelling, just ready to go. Um, And I'm not talking about fighting I'm talking about they wanted to take my life I felt that <clears throat> uh, they were just saying threatening remarks and I knew they were who because of how they were talking I mean um, just saying things like talking about your you better have your burner you know stuff like that and so yeah, they were out to to kill me, to end my life, and that's what that vision was. And so, um, what I remember was this man, because this person I still did not see them. I, they, I, I heard their voice. It was kind of a far off. They weren't that close, but they weren't that far either. I could hear them. They knew where I was. They could see me, but I, it was so foggy I couldn't see them. And so there was a man 
that just started. He saw what was going on and started protecting me. And so we were kind of going around in a really slow circle. And he was like right in front of me. He was looking at every every corner, every, every, he was, well, we were going around in a small circle, like, you know, just pivoting and just looking and looking. And he was just like right in front of me, just would not move. He would not leave my side. He would not leave me. I was like slightly behind him, but I was close and he was just completely just engaged in protecting me and so then I woke up so that's what basically that season was that was one of the most intense seasons that I've had I didn't understand it when I was in it some of the time Um, I remember questioning what the Lord was doing because I would pick up my kids from work after being exhausted from praying. I don't even count the hours anymore. I just, sometimes the Lord has me praying for, um, he'll have me praying. um, I'll get up in the morning and I'll be praying all night until the next day. And then I'll go do an errand. I'll come back and continue. And I'll do that again. Pray all day, all night. And I won't get any sleep. He won't let me get any sleep. And so I'm exhausted. And then I'll have me, um, I'll go um, at night, pick up my, uh, pick up um, one of the kids from from work. And then um, on the way there or, um, or back, and or back um, I'll be extremely sleepy extremely tired and the enemy is is, uh, they would be using that and trying to make me fall asleep Um, on the road just you know those are the kind of trials I was going through just uh, it was intense I had to try to stay awake and it was just a lot it was a lot going on they were trying to they were really tr- no. Th- it wasn't just dozing. It was. It were. They were full on attacks of crashing, trying to get me to crash, trying to get me to crash, and with my kids in the car, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, it, it, there was a lot. There was a lot going on. I, used to, I questioned like, what's going? Why? Um, when I was at work, same thing. I remember I got into eating. I was eating Reese's and um, red drinking Red Bulls, and I was just trying to stay awake. And um, it's just one of the things I was going through. But I really felt like my life was being threatened in that season um, by different trials that I was going through and then the the driving one that was just one of them another one was uh, there was a guy that he just decided to park right in front of our house and it was this abandoned lunch truck now th- this is not a dream these are real events he it was an abandoned lunch truck with dirty just just something that you don't usually see in the city and um, he just posted up right in front of the house, right through Christmas and everything. Just, and I was, it was just such an eyesore. And what he did was he would do drugs in in the vehicle. So it was, it was, it's like when somebody's parked parked right in front of your home, they're kind of attached to your property then right so you are you're de- it's like you're dealing with I felt overwhelmed like I was dealing with a squatter because this person just you never saw them 
and then they would just flat out just be disrespectful. I don't know what kind of drugs they were doing, but they were doing them. And whatever uh, spirits he was dealing with would come in the house. It would, because uh, that's what it is. It's like when, when if somebody um, comes in, if somebody's attached to your home, they have access to it. So these, these spirits had access to my friggin' house. And they would come in, and I would, I was, I was discerning, because that's one of my gifts. I, was, I discern spirits. And so I knew from that that what he was doing. I, um, it wasn't weed. I don't know what it was, but um, these spirits were, they were drug related. And so. I know that things kept happening, like my, the valve on my, one night, the valve on my um, gas broke. I don't know how it broke. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but there was a super huge gas leak. It just, it just seemed like all hell was breaking loose at, it just during Christmas and everything. It just those were just some of the things that I was going through they were just some of the things <sighs> yeah um, it, it was getting really intense with 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 the things that were happening just and then me not being able to get any sleep on top of everything having to make sure that I was complying to what God wanted me to do at the same time. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, <clears throat> this dream just, it was at the end of, of everything that I was going through and it helped me to understand that, okay, this is, this is supposed to be happening or this was supposed to happen. So, at the time, I didn't understand, and I was just, <laughs> I didn't like, I didn't like this, I didn't like this one at all, this was hard, and so, <clears throat> I know that if I'm, I was experiencing these things that other saints were as well, and I know that others that will go through that season will experience that as well. Um, maybe not the same way, but all hell breaking loose, something like that. Some whatever all hell breaking loose looks like in your in your season that that's what um, and then your life being threatened. Your life being threatened, being almost ran off the road, uh, things like that. Just scary things. And what I what I learned from all of this was trusting in God and he's telling me the whole time I'm in control and I had to keep telling myself that I had to keep telling myself that and so um, I wanted to bring up a scripture this is Joshua 1 and 8 to 9 keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I have not commanded you. I mean, sorry, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So... So be encouraged. Um, I thought to myself, okay, this isn't this is temporary. It's not gonna be forever. <clears throat> uh, that's what I was thinking, and what I kept having, to, I I I held on to the Lord is in control. <laughs> so this this is um, as as I wrapped up the season, I felt such a peace. But um, 
Uh, all of us, like the the Lord, He gave me a date. He gave me twelve twenty eight. I kept seeing twelve twenty eight. Not even my daughter told me twelve twenty eight, and that, that's actually her birthday. So I'm wasn't sure at the time, but that was the day that <clears throat> that the car was towed because I had to go through a process of. The, you know, the whole squatting thing. It's like someone squatting at your house when they park right in front of it. You have to go through the channels. And so um, that was the day that their car was the thing, whatever that thing was, was towed. <clears throat> That's when things were broken. Basically, the Lord was letting me know that the curse was broken. He let me know that day that the curse was broken. <laughs> Oh, you don't know how happy I was. So, um, so he was telling me, he's telling you in this, in this passage to be encouraged that he will not leave you nor forsake you. He's always in control. Um, even when I was going through the, 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 the deliberate, the, <clears throat> I mean, these things, when I say things, I'm talking about evil spirits. They had a gift or whatever to make you fall asleep. I mean, not like lulling to sleep, but it's like a jerk. It's like a jerk reaction, like sleep, like it was intense. It was like super intense. It was like you, they can make you fall asleep at, at a drop of a dime and I had to deal with that and know that the Lord was with me so oh my goodness um but I I felt I felt protected the whole time I felt like the Lord never left my side and was with me I I you you can't I guess the trial in this one the the testing in this one was not to be discouraged to keep going because that was tough. You know, there's there's always a lesson in the, in these, of course. We're not just going through the motions for, for no reason. Um, and so um, in James 1 and 2 to 4, it says the words... Um, hold on, let me read James 1 and 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Okay. So the words courage stand out. And not being discouraged is highlighted as well. So the Lord puts emphasis on not being afraid and not being discouraged. So, and the testing of our faith produces endurance. It strengthen, strengthens us in the midst of trials. Faith produces endurance. So... That was another thing that I needed to have to hold on to. Faith. I needed to have my faith that I was protected. That was the trial. That was the 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 lesson in the trial. So when we go through seasons, th these are the things that we want to want to make sure we know what we're coming up against. <clears throat> Because in the beginning, we don't know. We don't know what we're up against. But when we find out, we have to find out what it is so that we can perfect it and so we can get through it. 
so I knew that the Lord was with me the whole time, but I questioned some things. Boy, I questioned some things. Like, why is this, you know, like, it was hard. It, that one was tough. So he wants us to re be rest, well rest, rested and assured that we're completely protected, not yielding, not surrendering and not giving up. Not giving up in that child. And so, let me, uh, I'm going to look up a couple of things that I wanted to just wrap up with. I want to wrap it up. Um, yeah, I said, don't give up. So, he doesn't want us to walk away. He doesn't want us to, to throw in the towel. He wants us to go through it. The whole, the, see, I wanted to do that too. I was tempted to just kind of give up. And I'm, and one of the things, things he wants us to do when we're going through things like this is going through it. Because I know that there was, I didn't know that I was being disobedient and one day going to grab coffee. And he, and I, and I, and or going, I was going somewhere, and when I felt like, okay, I'm about to be attacked, I'm feeling like really, like, uh, I'm going to be attacked, I stayed home, I stayed, and that's not what the Lord wanted, he didn't want me to stay home, he wanted me to just go and go through it, that that was a part of the trial, knowing that he was with me. That one was tough, um, but this is this is an old word. I wanted to get this out um, because I, I just had no, absolutely no time. I had no time whatsoever, and and on top of that, I was just exhausted, working, and then it was the holidays, and then it was just a lot going on. <laughs> and so, forgive me for not um, uploading sooner. And so, um, yeah, I wanted to wrap up this, um, this episode with trust God no matter what. He is definitely in control. He wants us to be confident in him at all times. So no matter what testing or trial you're going through, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about... Um, getting hurt or being, you know, that you're, he's not going to let you go. And he's pushing limits to see. He's pushing limits, pushing buttons and pushing limits. He wants, he, of course, he wants to see, um, he wants you to pass. He's not, it's not for, um, he, he wants to see your limits. He knows what they are. He wants you to know. And so... The Lord is always speaking, even if we aren't listening. What is he speaking to you? Thank you so much for listening, and I'll, I will talk to you next time. Bye.